This episode of Grip Tips has been brought to you by M Squared Studio, and if you'd like to help out the channel, you can visit my Patreon page. I'll leave a link in the description below. We're back. We're back. I'm Dave Donaldson. Welcome back to Grip Tips. Uh, today we're going to be talking about the Joker 2 unit. I contacted K5600 because they just released an upgraded version of the Joker unit that they've had for years. They're calling it the Joker 2, and we need to look at all of the awesome upgrades that they've added to this unit. So let's get right into it. Talking about the case itself, it's the exact same on the outside, but it's on the inside that counts. With the goodies they sent me, I first noticed a 1K bulb boxed up, and then I also noticed a red casing with a couple of power connectors attached to it. And that's because this light has the ability to now switch over to a 1K tungsten unit. Don't worry, stick around till the end of the episode. We're gonna show you how to do it. Then just like the older unit, we have the head extension cable for the head and ballast. Then we have the head unit itself and already I'm seeing improved upgrades and a sleeker design with a nice blue stripe backing. Something that honestly screams quality in modern design. It's much, much prettier in person. I gotta say that. On the top end of things, there's not really a change as the lenses and scrims still sit in the same bag and hide away nicely per usual. However, I did notice that the locking mechanism's key slot has been extruded longer so that the door shuts properly and locks with little to no effort. Huge plus K5600, seriously, huge plus. That door can really get annoying, but I'm glad that you accepted that and have changed that. That was a great idea. Now on to the other upgrades. We all know that most lights have two ways to sit on a stand, but this has now three ways. This way, which is standard in pretty much all lights, there's also the 90 degree position so that you can undersling it if you need to. And the older fixtures had that too, but now you can mount the yoke 45 degrees. Another upgrade is that the lens and scrim tie down will only twist 90 degrees and stop. So it's either out of the way or perfectly centered to hold everything in place. And I do remember that being a small annoyance as in the older version, you could twist this 360 degrees, but there's never really been a need for it. And in this version, you can be sure that the top latch is straight and in line with the other three brackets. Big improvement, thank you for doing that. The next upgrade is that you used to have to unscrew two screws and a thumb knob to get the beamer off. Now it's just the thumb knob. In addition to that, getting to the beaker is now much more simpler. There used to be three screws that you had to get rid of in order to get to the beaker or to change the globe, and now they've added nothing more than just a simple screw-on ring. That is a huge, huge difference, huge game changer for K5600 because we've dealt with the three screws for years and the fact that they've made it that simpler and on set when time is always an issue, that just takes like two minutes off the clock it takes to put on any accessory. So that mm, just it makes my nipples hard. Moving on to the side unit, Luke Searveld said that this was a night and day difference and I couldn't agree with him more. Being able to rotate all the way upside down and the tilt tie down has completely changed so that there's absolutely no slippage. This is something that the older unit had a problem with, but they've made the yoke tie down a hell of a lot more durable and comes with an adjustable knob so it can also get a tighter bite and last for many more years to come. It just just makes me happy. Now bear with me because we're only halfway through the upgrades. This next upgrade is actually on the opposite side of the yoke. We're talking about this guy right here. One of the biggest things about the Joker being a hot light, it needs a lot of time to cool down. And especially if you have like a lens in front of that light, you're actually locking in all of the heat with inside of the head after you've turned it off. So the big deal with this little guy is they've now made it so that you can take the lens out of the unit and hang it up on this guy. Now the lens is getting equal air distribution across it so it can cool down quicker and the inside of the unit can cool down quicker. Now we move on to the ballast. The whip attached has a hub lens so that electrics can repair or change it if need be. This also came with a leash so that you can hang the ballast from like a stand or what have you. Also the whip has a coil around the cable near the ballast to prevent damaging the cord. That's a pretty good upgrade because I, I'll tell you what, I've sent like three or four ballasts back to the rental house just because this spot is completely either it's like frayed open and it's been messed around on the older units. So adding this little coil around the new ballast, that was a very smart idea. 
nipples again. Now if we look closer, they replaced the push button switch with a rocker circuit breaker, making it easier to tell if the ballast is live or not, and they also added a mode switch for high speed. Now I've tuned my camera just to give kind of an example, but what this does is that at high speeds you will start getting flicker from the camera. Now a lot of cameras can actually dial this in today, but now you can also dial it in on the light itself. If you watch closely, I go from standard mode to 300 hertz mode to 1000 hertz mode. Now the flicker is almost non-existent and I can imagine that a combination of this light mixed in with a camera that can dial in the hertz means you can fine tune it even more to get rid of flicker. I actually want to test this out at a much higher speed along with doing some other slow motion shots that would help grip an electric, mainly the electric side, uh, but the camera that I want to do this with is a Phantom camera that's $2,500 a day. Now that I'm certified, I can rent that but that's $2,500 a day, so buy a t-shirt. You'll also notice right underneath that that there's a dimmer switch, and I know that a lot of people out there already are thinking, well, yeah, but that's going to change the color temperature. That's true. Uh, it will. But the thing is, is that maybe you're looking for that. Um, I mean, after all, with everything that you can do with the K5600 Joker 2, um, with all the accessories that are available, isn't it kind of nice to know that that's another option. So I just thought that that was something to think about. On the back of the ballast, we now see that we have DMX capabilities. Stop, drop, shut them down, open up shop. Oh no, that's how the ballast rolls. I have no business singing that song. I am so sorry. So stop acting like a baby. Mind your business, lady. So on the bottom of the ballast, we also now have some impressive information. The Joker 2 now will do 3.7 amps at 230 volts and 8 amps at 120 volts. That's pretty impressive in itself. I mean, the older unit was like 10 and a half amps of power that it needed, which means you could pretty much only plug that into one outlet or one breaker or uh, one portion of a lunchbox. Uh, but now that it's down to 8 amps, the fact that they've made that uh, upgrade, it means that you can now take two of these units, plug them into the same wall or the same breaker, whatever, as long as it's uh, a 20 amp breaker, like most of the modern houses that are out there right now, and you can run two of them at the same time and still have four amps of breathing room. That's pretty impressive. Obviously, you're not going to get that with like a 15 amp breaker like you would find in some of the older homes, but if you're just kind of on location or whatever, and it's a modern home and you check the breaker box and it says 20, you can run two Joker units off that and still have four amp. I mean, that's just that itself. I mean, if on, on set for the electrics out there, that means that you're going to have a ton more space on your lunch boxes. Nice. So the very last upgrade that I want to talk about, I showed you guys earlier a brief glimpse of it. You now have the ability to turn your daylight HMI into a 1K tungsten. That was the red backing and the globe that I pulled out of the kit earlier. You're going to need those in order to do this. I'm also going to go just a little bit slower just so that we can, because this is kind of a tutorial within a review, I guess, um, but just Pay attention, we're going to get through this. First things first, on the back you'll notice two screws that can easily be removed with a flathead screwdriver. With the blue striped backing will then pop off and you'll then disconnect the two leads that plug into the head by simply pulling them out and then replace those leads with the other two that come off the backing painted in red. Reinsert the screws that you just took out, making sure to tighten those all the way down and move to the front where you will then take off the beamer, the beaker, and then replace the HMI globe with a 1K tungsten globe. And there's no special tricks here. It sits exactly like the HMI globe, just smaller, and just make sure to put everything back on as if you would if it was still an HMI. But from there, you have officially turned the unit into a 1K unit. Another thing to note, just like other 1K units out there, you won't need the ballast for the setup as it runs off of a standard three-prong Edison that's already connected to the red housing. When it comes to your Genie rental house needs, M Squared Studios, not only that, but they're also an insert stage located in Parsippany, New Jersey. Within the Manhattan zone and just 30 minutes from Midtown, the studio offers discounted or free delivery rates for your production. If you have any questions about what you've seen in today's episode, or maybe you're looking for a, a rental quote, you can feel free to reach out to them at www.msquaredstudio.tv. 
Uh, also, if you mention Grip Tips with your quote, they're gonna give you 20% off, and this is only happening for a limited amount of time, so make sure to take advantage of that. You can also check out their Instagram page as they're consistently uploading new content to show you what they have going on in the studio itself. Sadly, that is all that I have for you guys today. If you like today's episode, please let me know in the comment section below. You can also follow me on Twitter right here. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Be a supporter on Patreon, buy a t-shirt, and uh, we'll see you on the next one.